to our virtual Super Museum Sunday Tour of some of Savannah's many museums as seen through the lens of the City of Savannah Municipal Archives. I'm Luciana Spraker, Director of the Municipal Archives, and we are so excited to share some of our collections with you as we take a look at some of the special museums and cultural sites that make Savannah such a great town to live in and visit. If you have never been to the Municipal Archives, we are fortunate to be located in Savannah's historic City Hall. Seen here in a photograph of Bay Street, taken in the late 19-teens, early 1920s. While City Hall is still a working government office building, it is also one of the premier historic buildings in Savannah. Completed in 1906, the building features a variety of art and history exhibits for visitors. And during normal operation, we offer guided tours for the public that focus not only on the building's history, as well as city government history. As we journey around town, we are going to make stops alphabetically by museum. Our first stop is in the City Market District, where you can visit the American Prohibition Museum. The district takes its name from the old City Market building completed in 1876. Torn down in the 1950s, the market building was a major hub for grocers and farmers selling their goods in town. Its demolition was one of the major turning points in Savannah's historic preservation movement. One of Savannah's newer museums, the American Prohibition Museum, focuses on the prohibition of alcohol in the United States and how this era was both controversial and influential in American history. The museum's exhibits include a reproduction of this item from the city's collections. Discovered when the old municipal auditorium's time capsule was recovered to build the Civic Center, this small card advocates for shutting down the blind tigers, another term for speakeasies or illegal liquor establishment, and compares the drunk arrests between 1914 and 1916. The Andrew Lowe House was designed by architect John Norris and completed in 1849 for shipper Andrew Lowe. After his death, the property passed to his son William, who had married Juliet Gordon. The couple updated home updated the home, including installing one of Savannah's first telephones. After Juliet Gordon Lowe established the Girl Scouts in 1912, she allowed local troops to use the carriage house behind the main home as a meeting place. Upon Juliet's death in 1927, the carriage house was willed to the Girl Scout, while the Colonial Dames of Georgia purchased the main house in 1928 as their headquarters. The Beach Institute was the first school in Savannah be built specifically for African Americans. Founded in 1865 during Reconstruction, the building was built through a donation from Alfred H. Beach. He was the editor of Scientific American, and the school was run by the American Missionary Association. The Beach Institute closed in 1919, but then reopened in 1938 as the Harris Street Elementary School under the local public school board. During the 1980s, the Savannah College of Art and Design restored the historic building and deeded it to the King Tisdell Cottage Foundation, which opened the Beach Institute African American Cultural Center in 1990 to collect, interpret, preserve, and present African American history and culture. And they did that through events like the one seen here of an art exhibit of the Walter O. Evans Collection in 1991. Bonaventure Cemetery is one of the five municipal cemeteries owned and maintained by the city of Savannah. It was originally established as a private cemetery in 1846 on the former Bonaventure Plantation, and the cemetery used the name Evergreen Cemetery. In 1907, the city government purchased Evergreen and renamed it Bonaventure Cemetery. Bonaventure's location on the Wilmington River, its natural and man-made landscape, including impressive azaleas, camellias, and live oak trees, Beautiful statuary and grave markers, and many famous Savannah burials have made it quite the destination for both tourists and locals looking for a peaceful stroll, both in the 19th century and today. The Coastal Georgia Botanical Gardens are located off of Ogeechee Road on what has long been known as the Bamboo Farm. The property was once owned by the Smiths, who had planted three clumps of Japanese bamboo. By 1919, the bamboo was thriving when the United States Department of Agriculture leased the land for research. In 1983, the University of Georgia acquired the bamboo farm for use as an education and research center in horticultural and environmental sciences. 
If you visit the Botanical Gardens today, you can explore a miniaturized replica of Trustee's Garden, which was planted in 1734 as an experimental garden in the New Georgia colony. This replica garden includes historically accurate plantings of mulberries, oranges, grapes, figs, pomegranates, and other plants used by the early colonists. While we don't have images of either Trustee's Garden or the Botanical Gardens in our collections, I did want to share a couple of interesting images we have of azaleas and also this beautiful um, old image of a sago palm from our collections. Congregation Mikvi Israel is the third oldest Jewish congregation in the United States, tracing back to 41 Sephardic and Ashkenazic Jews who arrived in Savannah from London on July 11, 1733. The congregation completed its current synagogue on Monterey Square in 1878. The Gothic Revival Building houses the congregation's prized possessions in a museum, including the two oldest Torah scrolls in North America. Many prominent Savannians and community leaders have been members of Mikvi Israel, including former Savannah Mayor Herman Myers, pictured on the right at a city council meeting in 1904. Myers was mayor during the construction of City Hall, serving as chair of the building committee, and considers its completion without taking on any new debt one of the crowning achievements of his administration. A portrait of him, seen in the upper right corner, painted by Scotch artist Ambrose DeBarra McNeil, hangs in the city council chamber. The Davenport House is located on Columbia Square and was designed and built by Isaiah Davenport, a master builder around 1821 for his family and the enslaved individuals who worked in his household. In 1955, the house was threatened with demolition and a group of women stepped forward to save it, setting in motion what would become the Historic Savannah Foundation. Since then, Historic Savannah Foundation has helped save and preserve historical buildings throughout Savannah and Chatham County, operating a revolving fund and advocating for historic preservation. The Davenport House was originally used as the foundation's offices and the first floor opened as a museum in 1963. Today, the entire house is dedicated as a museum and is currently undergoing another round of restorations on the ground level, which will better address the contributions of the enslaved members of the household. First Bryan Baptist Church is one of the nation's oldest African-American Baptist churches, tracing its founding back to 1788 with the constitution of Ethiopian Church of Jesus Christ under Reverend Andrew Bryan. The congregation Congregation took the name First Bryan Baptist in 1867, and the current sanctuary, seen here in a watercolor by Richard Lowe Evans, was completed in 1874. The painting is part of the art collection of W.W. W. Law, local civil rights leader and historic preservationist, who was a lifelong member and Sunday school teacher at First Bryan. Law's personal papers were donated to the Municipal Archives and include items related to First Bryan's history, like this program from the Church's Women's Day in 1973. Fort Pulaski National Monument is located on Cockspur Island in the Savannah River. The fort, named for Revolutionary War hero Casimir Pulaski, was completed in 1847 after 18 years of construction, and the masonry fort was considered to be almost impenetrable. However, in 1861, it was sieged and occupied by Confederate forces for a period. Federal forces later used the fort as a prisoner of war camp, as well as a haven for escaped slaves. By the turn of the century, the fort had fallen into disrepair. President Calvin Coolidge declared it a national monument in 1924, and in 1933, it was transferred to the National Park Service for preservation and protection. In the 1930s, the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, ran a camp at Fort Pulaski, and many young men in the CCC completed the repairs needed to open the park to the public. The park officially opened to visitors after World War II. Georgia State Railroad Museum is located on the former repair shops complex of the Central Georgia Railroad. Started in 1833, the Central of Georgia helped open the interior of the state to the Port of Savannah. Construction of the repair shop's facility began in 1851 and included a blacksmith shop and roundhouse, among many other facilities. All maintenance, repairs, construction, and remodeling of the rail cars were completed at the complex. 
Along with the nearby Central Railroad Depot, the shops were busy and thriving into the early 20th century. After the Central was purchased by Southern Railway, the repair shops were closed in 1963, and the city of Savannah acquired the majority of the property, and in 1978, the Central of Georgia buildings were listed as a National Historic Landmark. The Central of Georgia repair shops are the largest and most complete antebellum railroad facility of its kind. The Juliet Gorenlow birthplace was built in 1821 by James Moore Wayne, lawyer, Savannah, mayor, and United States Supreme Court Associate Justice. After the Wayne family moved to Washington, D.C. in 1831, the home was purchased by Wayne's niece, Sarah Gordon, and her husband, William Washington Gordon. William Washington Gordon was also a lawyer and another mayor of Savannah, but to add to his distinctions, he was the first Georgian to graduate from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and the founding president of the Central Georgia Railroad. The house passed through their family and their granddaughter, Juliet Gordon Lowe, also affectionately known as Daisy, was born in the house in 1860. The Girl Scouts of the USA purchased the home in 1953 and Girl Scouts around the world led a major fundraising effort to support the restoration of the home. Um, holding bake sales, dinners, pageants, and more. Today, the birthplace is almost considered Mecca for Girl Scout troops to make a pilgrimage to as a way to feel the spirit of Daisy. While many are familiar with Juliet's contributions in terms of the founding of the Girl Scouts, not as many people know of her skill as an artist. This bronze bust was sculpted by Juliet in 1926, a year before her death, and is of her grandfather, former Mayor William Washington Gordon. It was given by her brothers to the city and is now on display in City Hall. The King Tosdale Cottage is the only stop on our tour that has been relocated. Originally located on Ott Street in Savannah, the Victorian cottage with, with its distinctive gingerbread details was slated for demolition when W.W. W. Law fought to preserve it. The house was moved, renovated, and opened as a museum dedicated to preserving African-American history in Savannah. From here, W.W. W. Law also launched the Negro Heritage Trail. The first guided tour in Savannah focused not only on telling Savannah's history from a Black perspective, but on, but on ensuring a more complete history is being shared with visitors, one that included all members of the community, past and present. Massey Heritage Center is housed in the historic Massey School. Massey was opened as Savannah's first public school in 1856 and named after Peter Massey, who donated $5,000 to the city of Savannah for its construction. The Greek Revival building was designed by architect Don Norris and wings were later added to the east and west sides. The school operated continuously except for a break during the Civil War when it was used as a hospital by federal troops. In 1865, it operated briefly as a school for freedmen with teachers from the American Missionary Association. In 1866, Massey became a unit of the Savannah-Chatham County Board of Public Education, and it operated as a public school until 1974. Massey was integrated and African-American students admitted in the 1960s. The school fronts on Calhoun Square, one of the few squares in Savannah without a central fountain or monument likely because the square was regularly used as a playground for the school and is still used for the school district's annual May Day celebration. Today, the Massey Heritage Center is operated by the school board as an interactive exhibit space and educational facility for both students and the general public to learn about Savannah's cultural heritage. The Oatland Island Wildlife Center is located on Oatland Island, which was purchased in 1927 by the Order of Railway Conductors, who constructed a retirement home for retired union members. The conductor's home was closed in 1940, and the home sold to the United States Public Health Services, who used it as a research facility to study sexually transmitted diseases. It was then transferred to another unit of the Public Health Services. The division was called Malaria Control in War Areas, who used it as a laboratory to study insect and airborne diseases. This agency later changed its name to the Center for Disease Control, or CDC as we know it today, and the lab was moved to Atlanta in 1973, where its CDC's headquarters are located. Olin Island was declared surplus, and the local public school board acquired the property. 
opening the Oatland Island Education Center to the public in 1974. The conductor's home is now used as a welcome center. In 2007, the center was renamed Oatland Island Wildlife Center, and today Oatland Island houses more than 150 animals from 50 different species in large and open natural habitat exhibits. Old Fort Jackson is Georgia's oldest standing brick fort, constructed in 1808 as part of President Thomas Jefferson's Coastal Defense Initiative. It is named after Georgia politician James Jackson. Soldiers were stationed at Fort Jackson during the War of 1812, and several expansions were completed on the fort before the Civil War broke out. In 1861, local Confederate militia groups occupied the fort, but Confederate troops abandoned it in 1864 when General Sherman and Union forces entered Savannah. The last soldiers to occupy the fort during the Civil War were from the 55th Massachusetts Regiment, an African-American unit. The War Department abandoned the fort in 1905, and the state of Georgia opened the fort as a maritime museum in 1965. After a brief closure in 1975, it reopened in 1976 under the management of the Coastal Heritage Society. The Savannah College of Art and Design, or SCAD as, is, as it is commonly known, was founded in 1978 to prepare students for professional careers in the arts. As, this, as the school has grown from eight students during its first school year to over 14,000 students today, its urban campus of historic and purpose-built buildings has also grown, as well as its programs and majors. The SCAD Museum of Art was opened in 2002 and is housed in the 1853 Central of Georgia Railway Depot which was a major transportation and commercial hub on West Broad Street, which we now know as Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. In 2011, SCAD completed a major restoration of the building that enabled them to push the mission of the museum to showcase emerging and established international artists, as well as serve as a resource for SCAD students, like those seen here on the right in the 1990s painting a community mural on the city's President Street water treatment plant. The Ships of the Sea Maritime Museum, which focuses on the great era of Atlantic trade and travel during the 18th and 19th centuries, occupies the former Scarborough House built in 1819 for William Scarborough, one of the principal owners of the steamship Savannah, the first ironclad steamship to cross the Atlantic Ocean. In 1878, the home, which was designed by British architect William Jay, was purchased by the local school board and utilized as the West Broad Street School from the 1870s until the 1960s, a segregated public school for the education of African-American children. After a period of vacancy, the Ships of the Sea Maritime Museum completed a restoration of the house in 1997 to accommodate the museum's collections. Telfair Museums encompasses an urban campus of three architectural masterpieces, including their flagship building, the Telfair Academy. Also designed by William Jay in the neoclassical Regency style, the Academy building was originally the private residence of the Telfair family. In 1875, Mary Telfair, the last heir of the Telfair home, donated the house and its contents to the Georgia Historical Society to be opened as a museum. After a significant renovation under the supervision of architect Detlef Leno, the museum opened to the public in 1886 as the Telfair Academy of Arts and Sciences. It is the oldest public art museum in the South and the first museum in the United States founded by a woman. The Webb Military Museum displays and shares the vast personal collection of its founder, Gary Webb, who has been collecting military artifacts and stories for over 40 years. Opening this museum in Savannah seems only appropriate with Savannah's long connection to the military, including the return of America's last thousand troops from World War I through the port of Savannah to our local military installations of Hunter Army Airfield and Fort Stewart. I hope you've enjoyed this brief tour through Savannah and a few of our lovely museums and historic sites as well as a peek into some of the wonderful collections we hold in the Municipal Archives for our citizens. If you are interested in seeing more of our beautiful City Hall building, check out two special virtual programs available online. In a bird's eye chat from the roof of City Hall, we speak with architectural historian and tour guide Jonathan Stalka 
about the, about the unique vantage point you get from City Hall's rooftop. Or try the City Hall architectural tour with Dr. Robin Williams, chair of SCAD's architectural history department, in which he points out some of the unique, innovative, and interesting architectural features inside. Both are available on our City Hall Tours information page at www.savannahga.gov slash 2968 tours. Here you can also find fun activities for children like a coloring book and scavenger hunt. From the City of Savannah and the staff of the Municipal Archives, thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.